President Biden calls for Elon Musk to be investigated now that he owns Twitter, but it looks a lot like revenge. Inflation is down a little and President Biden wants full credit. Putin reveals the real reason for pulling out a curse on Ukraine and Senator Rand Paul promised to, promises to investigate uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci to the fullest extent. By the way, thank you guys so much for giving these videos a like and sharing them with family and friends. I really appreciate it. Also, thank you Masterworks for partnering on today's video. Let's jump into the news. One of the most important reports of the month was just released. Consumer price index data shows inflation was lower than expected. Headline CPI was 7.7% year over year, which was lower than the expected 7.9% prediction. These numbers are the lowest we've seen in the last nine months. The stock market reacted positively as the market went from red to green. Lower inflation means the Federal Reserve might not have to hike rates as much as they previously thought. Uh, this has brought hope back to the stock market, and it will be interesting to see if this trend continues. Now, we can't be overly optimistic. This still marks the 19th month in a row that real wages are dropping because inflation is eating into people's discretionary income. However, President Biden is taking a victory lap this morning, saying that his plan is working and that it's because of him that Americans are feeling a much needed break. Now, the CPI data hasn't even been out 24 hours, but he's already saying that we're feeling a financial break from our money woes because of him. Now, I'd like to know, is this true? Uh, let me know in the comments. Is your money situation better or worse? Did your money situation magically get better because the CPI data is out? Did you get a much needed financial break? Or is this all just rhetoric uh, to brag about CPI being 0.2 lower than expected? Again, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Republicans still hold the lead for midterm elections in both the House and the Senate as of the filming of this video. All eyes are currently on Georgia, which is the only state where a runoff election will be held. Now, Georgia and Louisiana are the only states that require a 50% or higher majority in order to win. Democrat uh, candidate Raphael Warnock held the lead at 49.4, but was unable to get over the hump, so he's not able to claim victory. Uh, this will give uh, Republican candidate Herschel Walker an opportunity to rebound and possibly pick up that seat in Georgia. Uh, if Republicans can win, then they will then control the Senate. Uh, if not, it may be a 50-50 split with Vice President Kamala Harris making the deciding vote. So far, it looks like Republicans uh, will take the House, giving balance to the two-party dominated system we all live under. Uh, my best guess is Democrats will likely maintain the Senate and Republicans will take over the House. Uh, but what do you think? What's the final outcome going to be? We're being told we won't know for a couple of days. And on the Senate, we won't probably know till December 7th or even December 8th or 9th. So, but let me know your thoughts down below. Now, the White House is reportedly gearing up to counterattack uh, the GOP if they are successful in taking back the House. President Biden fired back at Republicans looking to file investigations against Democrats and also impeachment uh, articles against him, saying that it's almost a comedy. Biden also stated, look, I can't control what they're going to do. All I can continue to do is try to make life better for the American people. Many Republican nominees promised the American people investigations into COVID's handling and the Biden family business after the election. Uh, now that time is finally here, it'll be interesting to see if they actually do something about it or if it was all just talk. Now, one such investigation will be led by Senator Rand Paul against Dr. Anthony Fauci. Paul said last night he plans to hold Fauci accountable for the lockdowns and whatever else is needed. Uh, Paul said he will subpoena every document Fauci ever touched and have his team review them. Uh, we already know from a Missouri versus the United States government lawsuit that Dr. Fauci, the CDC, and the White House 
regularly colluded with Facebook, Twitter, and Google to suppress information, harass individuals, and get people kicked off platforms for not agreeing with the White House agenda. Now, I have a lot more big stories to share with you, including President Biden this morning calling for Elon Musk to be investigated now that he controls Twitter. But first, a quick word from today's video sponsor. If your investments are getting hit with pain, you might be asking yourself, if I'm diversified, why am I still getting demolished? Because you might not be diversified in the right way. See, Goldman Sachs just released a shocking report saying the classic stock bond strategy won't be able to keep investors from ending up in the red. I mean, look at this. It's down 34% this year alone. It's worst performance in decades. No wonder when 99% of stocks can lose value in a single day. Now Goldman says the ideal allocation for stocks has shrunk from 60% to 45. So what do you do with the difference that they recommend to salvage your returns? You invest in real assets like art. Goldman says fine art can protect your purchasing power even in the face of turmoil. The last time inflation was this high, fine art appreciated more than stocks and real estate at an incredible 17.5% a year on average, according to Masterworks All Art Index. What Masterworks does is genius. They let you invest in the same multi-million dollar fine art for a fraction of the price. And when the painting of their $500 million portfolio goes on sale, you get a slice of the potential profits. The results have been incredible. Eight exits, the last three of which delivered 17, 21, and 33% net return. In fact, Masterworks eight exits so far, seven of them returned over 17% to investors. That's including a sell literally last week for 17.5% net return. Masterworks and this market move differently. In fact, Masterworks has had to acquire and release more art on their platform to meet demand, and now there's a waiting list. But by being a member of my YouTube community, you can click the link and skip the line. Uh, now, I want you to think about this. What does the portfolio of the future look like? It should be more diversified, and Masterworks is a great way to start doing that. I'll make sure to leave a link down below. President Biden held a press conference today where he insinuated that he wants Elon Musk to be investigated for doing international business now that he owns Twitter. Uh, there has been bad blood between Musk and Biden for about two years now as Biden refuses to give Tesla any credit for creating electric vehicles. However, it's no secret people high up in government um, are angry that Elon Musk was able to buy Twitter. Well, today Biden was asked, do you think Elon Musk is a threat to U.S. national security? And should the United States, with the tools you have, investigate his joint acquisition of Twitter with foreign governments, including the Saudis? Biden responded by saying Elon Musk's cooperation and or technical relationship with other countries is worthy of being looked at. Now, it's interesting, Musk has never been questioned for doing business on an international scale, and suddenly he's a target of many media attacks and now possibly a government investigation just because he bought Twitter. Biden continued by saying, whether or not he is doing anything inappropriate, I'm not suggesting that. I'm suggesting it's worthy of being looked at. That's all I'll say. However, when a president says, this person who has made my life harder should be looked at or reviewed or investigated, do you think somebody connected to Biden isn't going to say, hey, let's take this opportunity to investigate the person the president just suggested be investigated? Now, let me know in the comments section, is Elon Musk about to be pulled into a bunch of witch hunts and investigations? Or... Are these comments from a sitting president with bad feelings? Nothing, and they'll just blow over. Let me know your thoughts down below. I think Elon Musk might be walking into some difficult years ahead. Now, speaking of big companies, Amazon just set a new record 
for being the first company to lose a trillion dollars in company value. It just goes to show just how overbought and leveraged many companies like Twitter, Facebook, and Amazon were. Um, I can see why many hedge fund managers say their strategy moving forward will be investing in smaller companies uh, going forward. So basically, they know all of these companies are overvalued and overbought. And so what are they doing? They're switching from the big guys down to the little guys. New York Mayor Eric Adams says, with the election now behind us, he plans to directly confront Governor Hochul about the laxed catch-and-release crime strategy hurting New Yorkers. He said, we have to be tough on crime or crime gets tough on us. So basically he's saying, we can't just be arresting people and releasing them hours later. They just go on to commit more crimes. We've got to do more about it. Former Vice President Mike Pence has opened, about, opened up about how Trump treated him during the last days of the Trump administration. Pence recalled how Trump told him, you'll go down as a wimp when he looked back at uh, trying to overturn the election. Pence's memoirs, So Help Me God, will be released on November 13th, uh, 15th, which coincidentally is right when Trump is supposed to be announcing whether he will or will not run for President of the United States. NBC News, who alerted the world to how bad John Fetterman's cognitive abilities were after his stroke, are now flipping the script and saying John Fetterman should run for president, that John Fetterman would make a great president. Wow, how their heart changed now that he has been elected. Uh, interesting how they flip-flopped on that story so quickly. Russian President Vladimir Putin has opted out of the G20 summit, where world leaders are going to be meeting. Instead, he will send Foreign Minister Sergei uh, Lavrov in his place. Speculation has emerged that Putin wants to avoid any discussion of the Ukraine-Russia war. President Biden will be attending, but previously stated he had no plans of speaking with Vladimir Putin. Putin feels like an outcast at the moment, and so to avoid feeling that way, he's just going to avoid the G20 summit altogether. Now, yesterday I told you how Putin suddenly ordered all troops out of Kherson, Ukraine. Zelensky responded by saying it was a trick and to watch out because Putin had something big up his sleeve. However, today, Russian minister Sergei uh, Shoigu said it's not a trick. The Russian Federation Army is moving people into an area where they can have a greater impact on Russia's mission while at the same time avoiding U.S.-sent HIMAR rockets. Ukraine is now deciding to see this withdrawal as a victory versus Putin having some kind of trick up his sleeve. Meanwhile, President Biden and Chinese pre President Xi Jinping will have a private chat during the G20 summit. Biden stated that they will discuss the issue of Taiwan, and he wants basically for there to be an understanding between the United States and China about the United States' relationship to Taiwan. Biden previously stated that he will draw a red line during the conversation and let China know that the United States uh, has a position on defending Taiwan. Now, let me know in the comments, do you think she will respect Biden's authority or will he politely nod and then go back and do whatever he wants for China? Let me know your thoughts down below. All right, now some big news coming out of the crypto world. Bitcoin has rebounded slightly after Binance announced that they will no longer purchase crypto exchange platform FTX. FTX was seeking emergency liquidity help to the tune of $8 billion, and Binance was planning to bail them out. However, Binance stated, as a result of corporate due diligence, as well as the latest news reports regarding mishandled cu customer funds and alleged U.S. agency investigations, we have decided we will not pursue the potential acquisition of FTX. Bitcoin dropped to nearly 15500 before rebounding up to 18000 today. Uh, basically, FTX is going down like the Titanic and people are fleeing as quickly as they can. But Ethereum dropped and then bounced back 13%. So if you bought that dip, you just made a bunch of money uh, writing that down and then buying it back up. 
All right, now a positive story to end today. Uh, 24 elephants in India broke into the care facility food area where they are being housed and found a vat of homemade alcohol. The elephants all took turns drinking this delicious Indian moonshine and the caretaker returned to find all 24 elephants passed out drunk in the jungle. Isn't that crazy? Think about how much alcohol or how, how powerful that alcohol would have to be in order to get a giant two or 3,000 pound elephant drunk. But there they were, all passed out drunk in the jungle. Pretty crazy, right? Now, this is my update for today. As I know more, I will definitely come on and share more with you. Make sure to go to the video description and click on the link to get your name entered to be one of the winners of the $15,000 in cash that Casey and I are giving away thanks to generous video sponsors. Also, if you want to learn about owning fine art, protecting your money, and growing it, check out Masterworks. They're a great company, and I'll make sure to leave a link down below. Now, before you go, I want to remind you that you are amazing. Make sure to check out this important video and be subscribed to the channel. I appreciate you stopping by today, and I will see you on the next video.